Hello again everybody and welcome back to the channel. I am McSnazzy and today we are back in Planet Zoo in our Ranger Park Zoo project. This is episode 5 of the series. If you have not seen episode 1 through 4 or you missed some sort of episode in between, you may want to go back and watch those because there might be some spoilers in this episode. There will be a link to the playlist in the description below so you can check out all the remaining videos. Now, getting into this here, we're going to build an enclosure in this uh, episode. This is pretty much all we did in this episode today because it was a pretty big enclosure. Um, we're extending off of the hyena exhibit that we made in the last episode. And we're sort of making this uh, sort of backstage building in the middle, the focal point here. And it's going to be facilitating both of these enclosures. Now we end up doing two um, exhibits or two enclosures here for the animal that we're making uh, an enclosure with today and it's both full of the same animal and there is a reason for that and I'll explain that more further in the video. But the animal that we are doing today in the zoo is going to be the cheetah and I'm sure you saw that in the uh, thumbnail and in the name of the video so it's not really a surprise but I wanted to extend this sort of African savanna grassland sort of feel that we have going on here in this little area with the hyenas that we started with over now to the cheetahs. Now, what you're seeing on the screen right now is the first sort of things I'm going to be doing here in order to extend out to a new enclosure is we're going to clean up a little bit of this backstage sort of staff entrance over here um, that goes back to our staff buildings that we're building backstage here in this sort of staff area along with this uh, staff building that will facilitate both of the animals that are in exhibits here. So I wanted to clean some of that up first before we head out and do the rest of this enclosure because I wanted to make this clean and concise and uh, sort of finished so we can move on from this area in the next videos and I don't have to go back and clean up anything because when I say I'm going to clean up something I usually end up not going back and doing it. So for the <laughs> future episodes and basically this whole project that's a whole I'm trying to finish off areas and then move on so we can keep on doing new things in the zoo and this takes a lot more time off camera than uh, you actually see me doing on camera and that's something to realize when maybe a video might take a little longer than usual to come out because uh, that's the reason I'm uh, basically touching up a lot of these areas off camera you're seeing most of the raw stuff in the footage and uh, you know it's sort of the base stuff so you guys can have sort of an idea of how you could uh, make a enclosure or an exhibit the way that I'm doing on the screen and then you can sort of make the outside look however you want. But I don't want to show like a good hour's worth of time lapse of me doing putting trees down and doing outside detail work because it's just boring to watch. And you, you probably just want to see the enclosures themselves. And that's what I would want to see too if I was watching the video. So that's that's pretty much why I do a lot of that detail work off camera. Now for the cheetahs, I wasn't planning on doing two enclosures for them and having a total of four cheetahs is what we end up with in the end in the zoo. Um, the first idea that really popped in my mind that I was going to do here is the cheetahs or maybe the African wild dogs and I thought the cheetahs are pretty similar to the African wild dog in terms of like excitement or if you're going to the zoo you know you kind of rope them together even though they're probably completely different and I'm just you know saying this but a cheetah is more of an attraction than an African wild dog I would say to an average zoo goer so I'm like let's put the cheetahs here the problem was I shaped this exhibit out and it was pretty big for the cheetahs like they had way too much space than they needed um, by like four times so I thought that was a little too much I mean it's nice making exhibits bigger sometimes so that the animals you know in a conservation sort of standpoint or viewpoint you think hey they have more space to move around and they're happier something like that from a realism standpoint they're not gonna make super oversized enclosures for every animal because then that's just really expensive and you can't see the animal if you're a guest and you know who's gonna come to your zoo in that sense unless they're like super supporting the animals which is a big part of the zoo but you know really it's more about seeing the animals and kids like going to it to see the animals so enough of that I'm rambling about it but we do two enclosures here I was reading the zoopedia as I always do before I put an animal in the zoo to see hey can they share an enclosure with any animal um, can they do this and that and what can I do to make this exhibit more realistic 
So I came up with the idea of two enclosures for the cheetahs. We're going to have two groups of the cheetahs um, moving around in the zoo in two different areas. And the reason this is realistic is in the Zoopedia it says that cheetahs only mate for like a month. They're only together female and male for a month. Then the females go off with the cubs for pretty much all the rest of the year or all the rest of like the cubs um, short lives. Not short lives, but the amount of time they are with the mother is about a year or two years, I think. I'm could, I could be wrong there. Actually, I think I'm way off, but they're with the cubs for a short amount of time, and then they're, they're really not with the males at all. They mate, and then the females go off alone. But the male cheetahs, they kind of travel in packs together, and up to like two males or three males um, in a sort of a bachelor pack is what they call it, where it's just, uh, you know, three males going around and sort of surviving together in the... African grasslands. So I thought it would be pretty realistic if we have a pen where just the males are in and a pen where the female is in with her cubs and they'll cycle in a male whenever they want to breed with the female. So I think that's super realistic. It worked out with the size problem we had and I think it just looks better in the end. And it looks like the uh, Ranger Park Zoo really cares about their animals because, hey, they got two pens for the cheetahs. They're, they're really going after this sort of um, really high quality care for these cheetahs because, you know, they, they're educated on it. They know that this is what the cheetahs would do in the wild. They have two different pens. And also the idea of this is that they can recycle these pens out. Say they have the female go into the other pen sometimes and then the male switch over to the other one. So they're not always in the same sort of exhibit or enclosure all year. Or maybe all year, but not all the time. Say they're in this pen for a year, then they switch over to the other pen, they get a change of scenery. It makes it feel less confining, stresses out the animal less, they're less depressed, stuff like this. That's what I'm trying to do here, a big reason why I wanted to do it. It just worked out size-wise too, but I think this could be a realistic thing we could add for more animals in the zoo if, you know, when I'm reading the Zoopedia, it kind of works out that way. So I'm happy with how it turned out. I know there's my whole spiel about it, but that's really what I wanted to explain, why we have two exhibits for them and why, you know, that's super realistic and it's a good thing to do. It's not just me, you know, wanting a lot of cheetahs because cheetahs really aren't my favorite animal. But, you know, they're, they're cool. They're, they're, they're cute looking and everything. So, you know, it's, it's not a bad thing. But I thought cheetahs were sort of a big ticket sort of animal that people would come to the zoo, the, the zoo to see. And I think kids really like cheetahs, etc. So it's a good idea to have two separate exhibits. Spend a little more money on the cheetahs than you would, say, the uh, tapirs or the anteaters or the hyenas. Not saying that those are lesser animals, but in terms of attracting people to the zoo... I think the cheetah would bring more people in than say the hyena or the anteater, something like that. So now we're just going to be doing a lot of the terrain work here. Um, they just like a grassland sort of feel. They hate a ton of vegetation, so I actually put a little more in than they liked, just barely. Because they, they only like about 20% coverage or however the scale works in the game. I think it's at like a 20 is their top threshold that they like. So sadly I couldn't make it look super nice and sort of with the hyenas uh, in the last episode I can't really put a ton of vegetation to make it look like super aesthetically pleasing and cool and everything. It just looks kind of like an open field where the cheetahs hang out and where they have a, a few of their like habitat enrichment items. But you know, it's realistic. That's what the cheetahs like. They live in a grassland, you know, there's not a lot of vegetation and it's understandable. But I get really excited when we can do an uh, animal that can take a lot of vegetation because then I can do a ton of stuff. I can put a ton of trees in there, bushes and flowers to make it really look like a jungle or something like that. So I'm excited to do one of those animals in the future. But for now, this is why the habitat's kind of bland. It's just kind of a field, but that's what the cheetah is like. So, you know, it works. It, it's what it's there for. 
So there's just a little bit more of the time lapse and then we'll jump into the real time portion of the video. Um, this one's a bit shorter because we only do the cheetahs in it. I did a lot of work off camera sort of trying to figure out what I wanted to do with this exhibit before I went in and I didn't have time to do anything else in this episode. But moving forward into the next episode and future episodes, I really need to put some drink and food stands down in this zoo. The guests are complaining about it a ton and we've gone five episodes without putting one down. And really there's only one bathroom and it's at the beginning of the zoo. So I think I need to do a little bit of that stuff in the next episode and I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen. But I might be able to squeeze an animal in there as well. I think we'll step away from this African sort of area we're doing and uh, do something a little different maybe on the other side, work a little bit on the west side of the zoo if you're looking at it from you know the standpoint as you're looking it's north when you're walking in so on the west side of the zoo or the left side of the zoo i kind of want to expand out there in the next episode that's sort of where i'm going to build this drink and food area not sure what i'm going to do for that yet either but we'll figure it out i'm sure it'll look nice but if you guys have a preferred animal that you want to see in the next episode, you can put it down in the description below, or not in the description below, you can put it down in the comments below, and I will take that into consideration when recording the next episode and doing the animal, because I think I'm going to do the drink and food stands first, so that'll give a little time for you guys to say stuff in the comments, and then I can put that into the next episode, hopefully. Um, if not, I'll just come up with something to do. I think we'll step away from the African area, like I said. Maybe we'll do, uh, you know, a different animal than we did in Timber Gorge. Uh, maybe one of the new South American animals, other than the, uh, the one we already have, which is the anteater. And uh, I think we want to work on the west side of the zoo. So the time lapse is going to end in a second. We're going to jump into the real time first person walkthrough where I talk you guys through a little bit of the finish, um, finishing touches and how it looks in the end. So I'll see you guys in a second in the real time portion. Hello everyone and welcome back to the real time portion of the video. We are back in first person mode and we're going to walk through what we did in this episode. We're going to start over by the Spotted Hyena exhibit, uh, our last episode of work and we're going to come over here. It's a lot more fleshed out. It still needs a lot of work. I'm going to add a little bit more fencing of course, but I made this little uh, picnic area off camera before uh, we get into the stuff I did on camera. And it kind of has the little uh, awnings with the education boards on it and just a couple picnic benches if you want to, you know, have a picnic between these two exhibits here and can uh, just enjoy yourself. And uh, I think it's a nice little thing that adds, you know, some realism, helps break up the space so it's not just a bunch of trees on the side and everything. But here we go. Let's take a look at the cheetahs. A little cheetah sign I made here. I used the uh, Ricey's Berlin font, of course, that we're using throughout the zoo a lot and we also used one of the silhouette cheetah pieces there I think it looks good and it helps cover up a little bit of the exhibit so we're getting sort of that realistic feel where you can only see them in views that you know are allowed and there's not too many views where you can get a full look of the cheetahs in order to not stress them out so this is one of the two pens um, for the cheetahs as I probably discussed in the time-lapse portion um, where we have the, this is the one with the female and the male, so they can have uh, a baby in this, and that just falls over right on cue. Um, so they can uh, mate in this one, and then if we come along here to the other uh, portion of the exhibit, it's cut in half, sort of. This is where the bachelors are, just the male cheetahs, um, if I recall. This is because uh, the males sort of run in a pack together and the uh, the females and the males only mate for a short period of time. Then the females go off with the, the cubs and that's about that. They don't really hang out with the males anymore. But 
I thought it was realistic to have two different pens where they can house the males when uh, it's not time to mate with the female, which probably wouldn't be that often, but if the female gets pregnant, we'll just have them over in this pen with the cubs, um, and I think I'll turn on uh, uh, babies for that, so we can have a little baby cheetah, because I think that'd be pretty cool. But yeah, this is pretty much it. It's uh, really, I really like how it turns out. It's really nice and... Uh, open like the grassland for them inside here we'll jump down maybe we can't I'll get out of this but uh, it's really wide open for the cheetahs they have a lot of space to run around in and they also have space where they can escape and you know lay down out of sight um, they can go inside their pen as well so they can kind of get away if they get stressed because they are notorious for getting stressed within zoos um, they're, they're timid sort of animals so we want to make sure they have lots of coverage, even if their natural environment doesn't really have a lot of coverage. Um, they live in the grasslands of Africa. Not a lot of coverage there, just a lot of tall grass. So try to go for that for both uh, the exhibits. And they both have the same amount of enrichment items, I believe, in them. So whether you're over in this pen or this pen, you're going to have the same, uh, same good time if you're a cheetah. So I also thought a realistic thing is they could switch these back and forth, you know, to give the animals sort of a different feel sometimes. You know, you're so used to being in pen 1, you move them over to pen 2 sometimes, just so they can uh, experience something a little different every once in a while. So I thought that was realistic, and I thought it was a really cool aspect to add. So I hope you guys enjoyed what we did in this video. We also ex expanded this a bit. Um, to accommodate for the second cheetah habitat which wasn't necessarily on my mind when I set out to do this episode so wanted to make it realistic after reading the zoopedia and everything figuring out all that but we did do this uh, retaining wall concrete work again with the trench so the guests are safe and you're at the same level so you don't have to have a big glass wall in front of you which I think is a really cool realistic aspect and it's also safety conscious so Again, more realism. But it's nice and wooded. Um, just break it up with a little bit of stuff, a lot of mulch. I think it looks good. Still needs a little touch-up work out here, out here, of course. Um, and we'll get to making some food and drink stands in next episode. Um, because the guests have been complaining about them. So we'll do that in next episode. We'll also do something... I need another animal over here. Kind of want to expand more this way in the next episode because we have been going straight in this direction. But I think it looks very organic and very natural. So I'm not too upset with it, but uh, there is room for improvement to go out this way. So that's about it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed uh, the time lapse and enjoyed this real time walkthrough. I had a lot of fun making this uh, cheetah habitat pretty realistic and, uh, you know, thinking about more things than I would necessarily think about while doing an exhibit in this game. Um, sort of stepping outside of just, let's get an animal down so we can get an episode out. And more into the, hey, how would this work in real life? Um, what would they be doing? How would they separate this? Because this was a big space and I wanted the cheetahs to not have too big of a space because it just wouldn't look natural enough. Because it wouldn't just wouldn't be realistic enough. So I really like where this episode went and how it turned down the end and it really caps off this area nicely I think this huge building here for you know when it gets winter time they have to go inside they have to do some vet vet things you know caring for the animals caretaking I think this is definitely big enough of a size where you could plausibly think that that is actually happening inside there even though inside it's just you know a bunch of walls and crappy path work but yeah, alas, that's, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Had a lot of fun making it. Thanks again, guys, for watching the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you did enjoy this. It really does help out the channel and helps us grow. And I will see you guys in the next episode.